IBS News films Sally Atwater, as she talks about how her journey to becoming a successful news announcer. The beautiful woman with striking blue eyes and short neat brown hair raises the volume of her voice and changes the position of her face to look straight at the camera, just as the man behind the screen tells her to. She talks about the small town she used to live in, where the only real connection she had was with her little sister. She used to take community college classes on communication, and when it was finally time to pursue the career she wanted, she had to make a demo tape, so she made one. She sent it to 37 stations, and she only got a reply from one in Florida. So she had to leave her town and her sister, and follow where her dreams led, to Miami. The scene shows Sally from the past, with curly blonde hair and bright pink lipstick, getting out of a taxi and walking toward the news channel that reached out to her. She sports a bright pink suit and walks into the receptionist, who recognizes her. Sally shyly bends forward and asks the woman if she is overdressed, but the woman says she is not, and hands the blonde young woman a staff ID card. The receptionist dials up Warren and tells him that Ms. Atwater is here. She then tells Sally to go up the flight of stairs to the manager's room. She walks up and peers at the news recording below. Sally is a curious and devoted woman who wants to be successful. She walks inside the recording room and looks at Warren, who is helping to record the news. The blonde man seems to be a busybody, there are men surrounding him right after he finishes up speaking the lines for the announcer on camera. But amidst the chaos, he tells Sally to follow him. She almost trips as she struggles to keep up with the fast-paced men. Warren turns back and asks her to keep up, referring to her as a sweetheart. She informs him that her name is not that, it is Sally. And he nods and walks into a room. He vaguely introduces Nick to her and informs him that she is their new desk assistant and to not call her sweetheart. After Warren finishes up his conversation with Nick, who teases him about Warren's relationship with a certain Trish, he leaves the room. Now alone, the man tells Sally that they don't usually wear name tags in the company, and she nervously fumbles to take it off, accidentally dropping her purse and spilling its contents on the floor. She quickly apologizes for being such a klutz and sits down to pick up the things. Warren helps her. Nick returns back with the news schedule for later, reading up on who will read what news, all the while Sally is still on the ground, hurriedly picking up her things before she makes a further fool out of herself. She gets up as Nick leaves once again, and Warren pulls up the demo filming of her that she sent to news channels. In the recording, she states that she will become a star. He has played this clip because it is obvious that the young woman before him has a lot to learn, and she admits that she does, but she also confidently states that she will learn. He brushes it off and lets her know of the work she will be expected to do in the meantime, which is desk work. He notifies her of how he likes his coffee, and as she goes to the stand, she suddenly turns back, realizing that Warren is the man who covered the news in the White House. She elaborately tells him of the things he asked President Bush at that time, and he turns back, positively surprised. He smiles at her, but tells her she still needs to get his coffee. It seems Sally was wanting to impress her new boss with her intellect, but it did not work out as she had hoped it would. He tells her he likes sugar, no cream, and she smiles and goes to make him his drink. From the back, he asks if she always wears that much makeup, making her look back with a surprised look on her face. A while later, Sally sits on her desk, answering the telephone and jotting down the news tips she gets. Warren comes up behind her and acknowledges the fact that she is getting the hang of it. She tells him she has gotten the hang of it ever since July. They walk together in the company, and Sally tells him that she noticed how the company does not have a weather person, and that having any announcer do it reduces the channel's credibility. But Warren does not pay heed to her words, maybe because she is a fairly new employee. Even though she tells him that she is ready to take on more responsibility, he passes her a smile, and offers her a ride home, to which she politely refuses and walks away. Sally is at Shunley, a dry cleaner's. Warren has her running a personal errand for him. She listens as an employee argues with Warren about letting Rob, and announce her wear a raincoat and give the weather news. But the whole idea does not seem to sit with Warren. Sally walks in quickly and offers to go outside and give the news, and do the desk job at the same salary. Her boss finally agrees, introducing the channel's new weather girl to the employee. Just as it is time for her to be on camera, she is absent from the scene. Warren walks into the bathroom to see her throwing up with nerves. She sluggishly says she cannot do it. Just then, the makeup lady barges in, telling the poor sick girl to come out so she can get her makeup done. But Warren sends the makeup lady outside. He holds Sally's shoulders and asks her to confidently say her name but she is unable to. She screams at his face that she cannot do it, so Warren says she doesn't have to, but he is surprised when she says that she has to. He opts to help her with it. At last, she is in front of the camera, reading her lines from the screen, but Warren seems to have changed her name from Sally Atwater to Tally, telling her it is easier to say. She stares at him while being live on news, and he scolds her to look at the camera, not at him. Her nerves disable her from reading the screen in front of her properly, but she starts with her impromptu sentences, 
taking her rain hood off and wearing huge sunglasses instead to emphasize the upcoming summer. The show seems to be an entertaining one for the employees and whoever is watching, but during the end she messes up again, stuttering out words. After the news is over, she is extremely embarrassed. She stares at Warren, who stares at her from up the stairs and takes the raincoat off, rushing out the fire exit. Sally sits alone in the guest house she is staying at, eating Chinese and talking to her sister on call. Just then, she hears a knock on the door. She stays on call as she opens the door, finding Warren standing outside. He lets himself in and looks at the mess she has made of the small apartment. Embarrassed from the events of the day, she angrily states that she faked her entire profile. The tapes, the achievements, the graduation, she never even got valedictorian. She was a student from a community college. However, Warren tells her that he already knew all of this because he ran a background check on her. He tells her that if she is hungry enough to fake it, she is hungry enough to do it. The understanding boss tells her that he is giving her a shot as a reporter because of the smooth save she made today. He leaves after cheekily telling her that this is why he came to her place, not with ulterior motives. For the next few days, she covers several reports, but none of them seem to be up to the mark for Warren. He tells her to do more, until she has learned her ways in the reporting newscaster world. One day, she hears about an opportunity for a piece of news at the beach, and she quickly takes it, rushing to Miami Beach. She reaches the windy beach, where Warren is waiting for a live reporter, Harvey, whose truck has broken down. Sally quickly says that she can take his spot if he fails to make it in time, but she does not know the story. She asks for the story from Warren, and then rushes into the herd of reporters asking questions from the man on the crime scene. After she questions him a bit, Warren pulls her out and fills her in on some information that she will have to report live. She repeats after him, but stutters and fumbles to put on her lipstick. But Warren scolds her about the fact that this is not about makeup. It's about reporting the correct news. He further scolds her, asking if she wants this bad enough. And she exclaims that she does, to which he tells her to show him. After the countdown, they go live. Warren is in awe at how calm and professional the nervous tally has gotten once she is on camera. She smoothly reports the news, and finishes her lines by mentioning her name and location. Warren happily hands her a bottle of water and she gladly drinks. Later at the company, she is approached by Rob, one of the main announcers of the company, and he compliments her on her live report, further making conversation with her. He holds her shoulder, surprising her, and then offers to mentor her, leaving her to her desk and walking away. After he leaves, Sally quickly sprays perfume all over the desk, as if he had a bad odor coming from him. Warren comes by her desk later on, and asks Sally to buy a couple of jackets so she can look more professional. Once at the shop, he has her buy a pastel pink outfit, and then asks the lady in charge to do something about Sally's unruly blonde hair. Later, Sally reaches the reporting spot with short blonde hair. She rushes through the people and tries to get a congressman to answer her questions. Warren watches as Sally gets into the action, reporting the news with a fierce and enthusiastic look. Joanna Kenley, a well-known announcer stands beside him and notices Sally to be Warren's apprentice. As she walks to her boss, he introduces her to the older, wiser woman. Turns out, Joanna is Warren's ex-wife. Wow, no one saw that coming. Even Sally stares at the older woman in awe, as she invites Warren to go with her to Havana. As the older woman looks at Sally defiantly, it is obvious that she somehow dislikes the younger girl. Back in their office, Warren and Sally sit together, with Sally sitting a little close to her boss, but he does not seem to notice, as he is busy fixing the noise on the recording of the congressman. Sally asks him about his past relationship with Joanna and he tells her of how they were a cute couple back on Sunday shows. Now that he has answered her question, he smiles, looking at the pretty girl, and continues teaching her how she will be able to find gold in the recording. While editing, they sit and have a beer together, and Sally brings up the topic of Joanna again, asking if he and she have children together. He says they don't, but he and Iris did. She asks who Iris is, and he tells her it's his first wife, and they had a little girl together who only lived for a week and eight days. Seems Mr. Warren has been married two times already. He then asks Sally if she has any family, and she tells him she has a little sister who she raised alone after her mother died. Her mother totaled the car on a highway and passed away before living her dreams. Warren smiles at her as she smiles back, staring at each other. Just then, there's a phone call for Sally, disturbing their moment. Sally hangs up the phone and then tells her boss that she needs a few days off. Without explaining her reasons, she rushes away, leaving him alone. Sally travels by plane back to her homeland. She holds her little sister as she cries into Sally's arms, telling her she will get the money. Warren gets a message from Sally, saying she will not be back for another few days, and Warren tells his employees that he will take care of it. Sally sits in the office of a casino. The man on the desk counts the money she just gave him, saying he does not care if Sally's sister's boyfriend ran away with their money. Just then, Warren enters the office and hears the man pressuring Sally to pay the entire cost today, 
even though she says she will get it tomorrow. Warren interrupts the conversation, asking how much the debt is. Sally stares at him incredulously, asking why he is there. The money Sally owes, $550 is paid by Warren quickly, who in fact, pays a little extra and then tells Sally to leave with him. They go out in the rain, and Sally gets mad at him, saying he gets a rush from humiliating her, but he denies the accusation, saying he only had a hunch. As Sally is livid at her boss, he explains that she expressed her need for money, and he provided it. The girl gets angrier at his way of speaking, but Warren reminds her that she works for him. She takes that as an insult and says that he thought he would come here, pay for her so that she would owe him. Sally argues that every girl she grew up with ended up thinking she owed some guy, and she does not want to end up like that. The adrenaline wears off for the both of them, as their argument ends. Sally takes a deep breath and asks her boss for another couple of days to make sure her sister is okay. He says he's okay with that, and then leaves. As Warren sits at the airport, there's a call for his flight and he gets up. Sally is there with him to say goodbye for the short few days, as she will not be able to make it to the office. She tells him she didn't want him to see any of this, but he caresses her hair slightly, and says so what? A few days later, she's back at the office, looking at all of Warren's previous reporting clips when he used to be a newscaster. She takes a gulp of her drink and watches him with wide eyes, assessing him with her fierce eyes. She sees the clip of a previous recording when Warren reported news live from a marine attack, a rather dangerous location. Later, she asks him what it is like to work at the network, he tells her it was hard but fun, but he left because he stopped finding it fun. The two are having lunch together on the rooftop of their building, asking each other questions. Warren asks Sally why she used to enter stupid $20 contests, and lets him in on a secret, that in none of those competitions did she end up in the top five. They are now at a big, empty stadium. As she grabs her mic and sings the way she used to at these contests, her voice echoes and Warren smiles wide, watching her as if she is a piece of art. Her confidence is indeed a very attractive trait about her. She sings loudly, with power, and without getting nervous. Her voice quivers as she sings immaturely, and he smiles more. Later on, the reporters sit in Warren's room and talk about the way they should go about things. Sally, who is now great at her job one-ups Rob, who is a know-it-all. The employees chuckle a bit at their informal competition. They get a tip on a crossdresser who made it to the beauty pageant, and Warren tells Sally to cover that news, even though she says she does not want to. That night, Sally visits Warren's house. This would be weird for an employee and a boss, but it is obvious that the two of them are closer than that. As they stare at each other, Sally asks him what he wants, something he doesn't get asked often, because at the question he smiles, looking at her fascinated. Teasingly, she leaves his home. He watches her go with a chuckle, saying to himself that he knew she would go. On live, Sally wishes Miami a happy new year from the news channel, and sits in her decorated office. She later on reports live news, and gets an interview with someone from the jail who just had a baby. Her career seems to be booming as she sits beside Rob. Warren watches the live news and assists. To everyone's surprise, Rob starts talking out of the script. He takes a jab at Sally with his words. She provokes, and haughtily replies back, all while Warren tries to stop the show as soon as possible. After the camera stops filming, Rob and Sally rush out of their seats, pulling the fake smile off their faces. Warren walks down the stairs, scolding Sally for changing the news channel rules on camera, and not working in a team. Angered by everyone's provocation, she says she can gladly find another job where she will not be called the news director's protege. She goes back to her seat, and Warren follows, telling her she is right. The next scene shows Sally at an event where Joanna is also present. The older lady introduces someone Sally has been wanting to meet. He recognizes her and they shake hands. Back at the office, Warren sits in Joanna's room. The older woman asks him if someone has finally gotten to him, referring to Sally. Warren takes his coat off and looks at Joanna an unsure look in his eyes. Meanwhile, Sally has dinner with Bucky, an influential man who says he can put her in one of the more exclusive cities as a newscaster. He says her voice is full of money, and she stares at him with wide eyes at his words. Back at the news company, Sally comes back from her dinner and enters Warren's room, who has his tie undone and drinks. He repeats the words Bucky said to her, knowing full well of her intentions to further her career. Warren says that the words aren't even his, they are from a novel and Bucky says them to every woman. He however tells her that this is the right time for her to go, reminiscing about the fun times he and Sally had. She, deep in thought, sits beside him, asking what he wants again. She says that he knows what she wants, and he replies that she wants to go to Philadelphia, but she says that is not it. Sally brings her face close to Warren's and kisses him. He kisses back. It seems the two of them have been waiting for this moment. He takes her home as they lay on his bed, holding hands and making love. Later in bed, they lay down together and talk as he caresses her hair. In the morning, Sally tells him he can go with her to Philadelphia, but Warren says he has already been where she is going. He tells her of the mistake he made, he trusted the source, 
and reported false news. Sally stares at Warren lovingly and asks why they didn't do this before. He caresses her cheek and says it was because they knew it would be hard to stop. He says they still have a few days before she has to leave, and goes on a mini vacation with her to an island, where they spend beautiful, quality time together, making love, sitting by the beach and cooking fish, swimming together, and even kissing in the sea. It is time for her to leave, they kiss and hug at the airport and she gives him a portrait of one of her old competitions as a gift. Finally, she walks up the escalator, saying goodbye. Sally reaches Philadelphia, walks inside the lavish building, and sees the newscasters who seem to be real professionals. She later has dinner with the group, but in front of the woman, Sally looks immature. This makes the snotty woman stand up and leave for her business. Back in Miami, Rob gives news of some very old women, making Warren roll his eyes and criticize the low substance of their news. Warren seems to be in a constant bad news, and his employees know why he feels this way, because they say that all the fun has gone to Philadelphia. It is snowing heavily in Philadelphia, and Sally reports news of the increasing number of physical violations in the city, but she accidentally makes another mistake. Later, she is called to her higher-up's office, who shows her a clip of what people think about her. In the clip, she is criticized for her hair and other matters, making the young girl disappointed. Her boss says that she has potential, but she has to make contact in order to live up to her full potential. Sally hears all the constructive criticism while playing with her hair, which was insulted. She calls Warren, later on, now sporting blow-dried dark brown hair. She seems to be distressed on the phone, making Warren ask her if she is all right, but every time she tries to speak to him, someone passes by her desk, making her quiet. She hangs up the phone with an anxious look on her face. Bucky goes to Miami and approaches Warren, who is at a pub, playing chess with an older man. Bucky, who is Sally's agent tells the older man that she is distressed and Warren, who has a special relationship with her should know. He tells Warren that he should come to Philadelphia for a while, but Warren says he has a job here. Bucky says he can take leave if he wants to, since he doesn't seem much busy here either. Warren says no, but Bucky tells him to think it over. Later, Sally is playing Spider Solitaire alone in her office, when Warren comes in, wearing a classy trench coat and a charismatic smile. She cannot believe he is here, and she gets up from her seat, eyes wide in surprise. She smiles and walks to him, and they kiss. She asks him to stay, and he says he can, long enough. They lay back on the couch and kiss as Sally takes the buttons of her shirt off. However, her higher-up comes by to pick up something. Seeing them together he averts his eyes, bidding them a quick goodnight before rushing off. The couple laughs and continues kissing. Later on, Warren watches all the playback clips of Sally, in which she is delivering news, but not in her own way. It seems being in Philly has made her insecure. Warren looks at her with distraught, and scolds her. But she tells him that this is the way he made her. However, she has it all wrong. Warren reminds her that he dressed her up, but in front of the camera she was her own person. He sits her down, and has her look at the face of the woman she was interviewing, reminding her that she does not have to be the pro Marsha. She can just be Tally Atwater. Sally looks at her lover with tears in her eyes, asking how long he can stay, because the minute he goes, she shuts down. They hug. The next few news reporting involving Sally go extremely smoothly. She is speaking in her own way and seems to be doing a great job, all with Warren's help. Warren calls Bucky one day and asks to sit with the man, who thanks him for the way he has influenced Sally's confidence. Warren asks how far she can go in her career, and Bucky says she can go all the way. Give her one year, and a couple of months at best. He then asks the blonde man if he is up to be with her for that long, helping her kickstart her career, and leaving his own position at Miami. The next day, Sally gets surprised by her new cameraman, Ned. He's the same one who was with her during the start of her career. She walks to him and they hug happily. Warren goes around, looking for a job in the same city as Sally, but since he does not seem to be very well respected even though he has a lot of prestige, he gets frustrated. Late at night, he and Sally take a walk by the rooftop together, as he hugs her from behind, she expresses her desire for him to stay here with her. This gives him more motivation to try harder for job hunting. The next day, Marcia creates a ruckus in her office over a DJ's song, disrespecting both her and Sally, and blames Sally for taking her position in the eyes of the public, but the young girl barges out of the office after saying that she was the victim as well. Later, her higher-up approaches her, and informs her that Marcia might be leaving for Cincinnati. He offers her the woman's position. She sits with Marcia, and that is when Sally finds out that there is another man in Warren's position back in Miami. Warren sits with a man, trying to get a new job through his connections. However, he leaves without getting one, but lets the man know that he plans to stay here a bit longer. The man understands that it is because of a girl. He meets with Sally, who says she has been trying to call him, and they walk, as he talks about New York. Sally seems to be very distressed, because of the difficult position she has unknowingly put Warren in. She visits his ex-wife, Joanna, who explains why Warren left the network. Joanna tells Sally that she was the source that betrayed him, 
but she never thought he would buy that fake story she gave him. But he did. And the same man who fired him, is the one Warren is asking for a job. Yet again. Hearing this, Sally's eyes fill up with tears. She visits Bucky's office, and asks for a favor. Later, Bucky visits Sally's boss's office and asks for a job for Warren, who seems to be livid at the idea. That night, Sally and Warren have dinner together and she tells him of the latest news that they will be reporting. Sally stares at him with a sultry look in her eyes, and surprises him by asking him to marry her. She says she wants him around in the morning, and he laughs and says that he is already around in the mornings, and that he has been married twice, so this might be a bad idea. She smiles down at him and gets close to his face, whispering that she wants him to be legally obligated to be there for her every morning. She kisses him slightly as he smiles at her. The next scene is the beautiful couple having a small wedding, with only a few guests, including Ned and Sally's sister. As they spend their night together, Sally hears the news of the inmate she interviewed being sent up here. This is a good opportunity for a headline. The next morning, the couple pitch their idea to John, Sally's higher up who does not seem to like the idea because he believes that the majority will not be interested in it. Warren argues that John, his long-term friend who he stopped talking to, is only out to get views and picks at headlines to best suit what he thinks will work out. John gets angry at the idea, insulting Warren over the fact that Sally has put herself out there so that Warren can have spot in as well. Warren grabs his coat and leaves the office. Sally stands outside the jail with Ned, who gets the filming equipment out of his truck and goes inside. Meanwhile, Warren calls Barry, the man who fired him, and asks if the job he offered is still available. Inside the jailhouse, the man Sally interviews is doing pull-ups, talking about a few things on the mic as everyone's attention is on a fight happening near the wrestling ring. As Sally is saying thank you and goodbye to one of the guard ladies of the jail, there seems to be an attack from the inmates. The police officers quickly lock the area, where about 10 officers, including Sally and Ned are now hostages. Warren finally has a job opportunity up in Washington, but as he is driving to the border, he hears on the radio about the emergency lockdown in that jail. He takes a sharp U-turn, terrified of the idea of his new wife being trapped in the jail like this, where she could easily get put to eternal sleep. Outside the facility, there are several police officers and several newscasters trying to get the latest bit on the emergency. Warren rushes inside, barging through the crowd, and asks if the newscaster inside is still alive, but he does not get a reply. It is now nighttime, and there is a fire inside the jail, with several helicopters outside it. Warren gets his men to contact Sally, and she appears on camera. He quickly takes the microphone and tells her of her strength, which is the camera. He tells the coughing girl to stay calm and report the news, and the inmates' stories, and they will not do anything to her. Scared out of her mind, Sally goes live under the dire circumstances, and reports from inside the scene of the crime. The sheriff's bus enters the scene, and Warren goes back to his bus, telling Sally that she will go online in three minutes. John comes into the van, and lets Warren know that this is his show. Sally goes live again, but this time, she is not able to complete her news reporting, because the camera goes flat and there is suddenly no contact from her side, making Warren extremely anxious. It is a wonder how he is still able to put it together. He answers call after call of people who are looking for contact with Sally. At long last, he gets something a live recording of Ned running with the camera with Sally running to escape the prison. She puts on her microphone and gets ready to report. The government report that they have the situation under control. But Warren puts Sally on live and asks if this is true. But she reports, out of breath that that is not true. The inmates have it under their control, or more specifically, one group of inmates. They have created unrest and violence for the other prisoners as well. It is now 2 a.m. It has been 10 hours since Sally has been stuck in there. The young girl, now unruly and looking tired, reports now the inmates are ready to fight the guards, because fighting is the way of life they learned on the streets. She ends her live recording then because of no new news. The military is called to fix this immense issue, and a large number of trained soldiers enter the scene in unison. After they enter the prison, they break apart doors that the inmates have used. Sally who is behind one of them falls to the ground. The live recording gets disconnected when the inmates cut off power. There is an enormous amount of ruckus as Ned and Sally lay on the ground to save themselves. Fernando, the man Sally was there to interview is now Sally is finally able to get out of there, and she stands outside of prison now, recording more of the news as a witness to whatever happened. She talks about Fernando, who was not a good man by society's standards. He was not even a good man according to his own standards. But he was trying to better himself by learning nursing inside the prison, and offered to treat patients as well. Sally starts talking about the new governor on campaign, who removed this facility from prison, he stated that prison should be for punishments. Warren stops himself from laughing at the reckless and real news that his wife is giving, with no care about alarming people that are in a higher position than her. She reports that 15 prisoners 
and that these reforms are pretty detrimental. Warren walks outside to Sally, who walks to him while crying. She gets into his arms after the traumatic event of the whole night, sobbing as he holds her in the after effects of the chaos. At IBS office, Bucky and Sally enter. He is there to drop her off at the headquarters of the news channel she was just an employee for. She gets introduced to the three people who run IBS, one of them hilariously calls them the Three Musketeers. They compliment her for what she did for their channel the night of the prison attack. Later, Sally meets with her husband for lunch. He asks what they offered her, and she tells him they offered her a new position as an anchor in Washington, but she told them she would think about it. Warren asks her what's there to think about. The offer is great, the pay is great, and he believes that Sally can take on such an important role now. But Sally has other ideas. She tells Warren that they make a really good team. The night of the attack proved it. Warren, however, gives all the credit to Sally. He tells her that she did it all on her own. He then tells her of the hunch he has in Washington, and that he has been offered to investigate a case in Panama, and report on it. Sally says they can work on that case, but he lays out the entire plan for her. She figures out that he has already planned everything out. He leaves his seat and sits beside her, telling her he has to do this by himself. Sally, upset at all this reminds Warren that the idea was that the two of them will be together. Warren says that it was the case then, but he does not want either of them to hold each other back from living up to their full potential. She looks into his eyes, asking if he really wants to be with her. It seems that she is starting to get insecure about their relationship. But he replies, saying that he wants to be together with her so much that it hurts. He grabs her face, telling her he does not want to be away where he can't see her, touch her, or hear her, or see her beautiful smile. He ends his sentence, saying that he has a very narrow but definite opportunity that he has to take for his future, and hers. He says if he can get this, if he gets lucky, he will be successful. She smiles at him, now realizing that her husband really wants this, and he corrects her, saying that she is the reason why he wants this. The couple stand at the airport, and Sally tells him that they have not had that much time together. But Warren tells her that every day they have is one more than they deserve, making her smile. They kiss lovingly and hug, as he grabs his suitcase and walks away. She looks at the spot where he was, seeing the shoes he accidentally forgot. She calls out to him and puts the shoes around his shoulders. As he is leaving, she calls him from behind and says stay up when making him grin at her with love in his eyes. Sally packs her office, seems she has taken the new job. She sits in place of an anchor person, noticing the huge and sophisticated looking room she is in. Sally gets on the line with the person who will be reporting her news, and surprisingly, it is Warren, speaking from Panama. He looks scruffy, sporting dirty hair and a button-down shirt that is open all the way. He recognizes her voice too and teases her about her new polished shoes and her new hairdo. She asks when he is coming home, and that he looks really good. She looks at him adoringly as he teases her about how he is glad that he cannot see her, because the mind is a great thing. She giggles a bit, and then Warren tells her that he is having a lot of fun. He then goes offline. Sally's current office has held a farewell party for her, and she sits at the front, thanking Warren, who could not make it to the party, and Ned, as she jokes, is one of the only people who know what she looks like in the morning when she's groggy. She calls to Ned, who is at the back, and he beckons her over to the TV. There is news reporting of a crew under attack in Panama, and Sally listens and watches with wide eyes and dread. There is a recording of Warren, who seems to have survived, but the most recent filming of the scene shows a few people laying lifeless on the ground. Sally puts a hand to her mouth and her eyes fill up with tears when she notices the shoes of one of the people realizing they are the shoes she gave Warren as he was leaving. She cries without sound in front of many people, and the newscaster finally identifies the American who was put to eternal sleep. His name was Warren. Ned holds Sally as she has a nervous breakdown, chanting inaudible things. It must be a great cause of pain for her to know that her husband died while she could not even meet him. Later, Warren's body is transported back via airplane, and Sally and Joanna stand on the runway, with Joanna holding Sally. Now at home, Ned holds Sally as she hears of the discoveries her husband made before his death. For such a young girl like Sally to be a widow at her age is definitely not fair to her. What is worse is that she did not deserve to lose her husband in this horrible manner. It is hurtful to think that he was not even able to leave her a goodbye note, or some words that she could cling to if she ever missed him. The amount of love Warren and Sally had for each other was immense. It was obvious in the way they looked at each other. It is a shame that they were not able to spend more time together. Now, the words Warren spoke to her before he took his flight to Panama, how he said that every day they spent together was one more than they deserved, seemed to bring a little peace to the otherwise heartbroken atmosphere. A little time later, there is an award ceremony held to pay respect to all the newscasters who contributed a lot to the channel. Everyone is there, including the employees from back in Miami, 
to Joanna, and everyone who was a part of Warren's life. They hold a tribute for Sally, who arrived from a small town with big aspirations. They show clips of her debut recording, in which she had long blonde hair and said she wanted to be a star. The tribute includes a clip of Warren talking about her. She tears up, seeing him talk of her so highly. He calls her the moon and the stars, and how he used to make her run errands, get him coffee, and how he refused all of her reports but she never broke, she was even stronger than him, he says. Tally Atwood is called to the stage, and she takes her place in front of the mic, but she does not read the lines in front of her. Instead, she talks of the Panama case, which turned out to be really important for IBS. The case started with one reporter who had a hunch, who did all the legwork, and got it. He says she didn't always believe this, she believed that standing up here meant glory, to show people, but it's different, and she knows that now. She says she is only here for one reason, to tell a story. She says her husband used to tell her that, not so long ago. As Warren used to tell her, reporting is all about the victims, the people, and their stories, not about meeting the general public's demand. The audience, whoever knew Warren, has tears in their eyes as they hear Sally's heartfelt speech. In the end they clap loudly for Sally and Warren.